Hey YouTube, welcome to another episode of The Fast Ratio. Today we're going to look at gear. How do you choose your gear, what's the pros and cons, why do guys get leathers, why do guys get textiles. Personally, I have had textiles previously, so 10 years ago I had a motorbike, I had a dry rider, dry mesh, and it was obviously 10 years ago, so technologies and stuff have evolved. Uh, couldn't fault it, it had your wind uh, and rain liner, it had a uh, warming layer, so a quilted layer, and you could just in summer ride just with the mesh and the armour. Uh, obviously 10 years ago I had an accident, that had to get cut off me at the site, which was sad. However, I didn't end up going back to riding, so I uh, didn't need to replace it. However, coming around again 10 years later, getting back on the bike again, I went leathers. Because back 10 years ago, I wanted to have a pair of leathers. Why? I don't know. Um, so I got the leathers, and because I commute to work and I live in Canberra, it's generally pretty wet and cold through winter. Uh, leather is not good for wet. Uh, it can take a very long time for it to dry out. And if you do have an accident and you've got wet leather, it will just shred up. Uh, it doesn't like being wet. So I decided to go and get myself the uh, textile kit, uh, which I chose this one. Uh, it's a pretty good kit. Again, it's got your rain liner, your quilted liner, and you can ride with uh, all the vents open. It will suit in summer as well. So then why would you get a leather? Uh, the reason I like my leather is it is a bit more uh, protecting, it makes you feel a little bit more protected. You'll find if you can do any race uh, elements, you can do track days or any of those things, they will have, you have to wear leathers. Um, otherwise, yeah, um, the textile kit would do. Cost wise, uh, both kits I think cost me about the same for the pants and for the jacket. Um, in summer, I generally would just throw on my leather jacket, open up the vents. Um, otherwise, yeah, you could get away with essentially the textile uh, only. Again, because I commute, I've got my winter gloves. These ones have got more thermal layering in it to, to obviously keep your hands warm. Uh, they're the longer glove. Uh, you, I've got my long rides, so these ones obviously come up over your cuff and come down over to make it so obviously you've got more protection. So I generally will wear them when I'm doing longer rides uh, in the more summer because there's pretty much just skin, there's no uh, sort of quilting in them. For around town, I generally just ride with these pair of RSTs, uh, they're pretty versatile. Um, all year round glove because uh, I've got the heated grips I find uh, they do the job I did have these Alpine Stars that did the same however these are only a large and I found that uh, it was getting caught on my uh, knuckles uh, so I went for an extra large and I've realised since uh, these two pairs have sort of become uh, phased out because uh, they're too small so that's pretty much my everyday, my long rides and my winter gloves. Uh, when you're buying kit, uh, you need to work out probably where you need to sit. Uh, I could get away with them with my heated grips and it'd be a little bit cool in winter, uh, but it'd still be manageable. Uh, I do find that you only need the um, heat grip on low with these in winter, otherwise you cook your hands because these are already providing you a level of warmth. These wind will go up your sleeves, which isn't an issue in the um, summer and the warmer months. Um, however, on longer rides, generally I don't like having too much because again, if you come off on a longer ride, you're generally doing higher speeds 
and you're opening up yourself to more touch points. So, I remember 10 years ago I had an AGV. Uh, can't even remember exactly what it looked like. I can't find a copy of it anywhere on the internet, surprisingly, but again, the internet was a different place 10 years ago uh, for, for purchasing these things and, and cataloging. Um, so I did my research, I remembered sizing, everything like that, and so I pretty much just went online and purchased this in the size ML, which is exactly the same helmet that I had 10 years ago. Because I was buying online, I didn't want, I wanted to reduce my risk, so I went AGB, purely just because I've had them before. Uh, this, this K3 SV, um, has been an amazing helmet uh, for the 18 months now that I've been back on the road. Uh, obviously 10 years ago we didn't have foot down visors, uh, so that's been a very nice uh, modern uh, addition. Uh, it's also got the visor crack on this particular one, so you can just get your uh, slight breeze through. It's got a lot more vents than what my helmet did 10 years ago, and a lot better channeling inside. The the helmet itself pretty much feels like the helmet felt 10 years ago. So uh, AGV, that was why I chose that over any of the other brands. I didn't want to go to a motorbike shop at the time because I was getting back into it. I figured I would end up probably buying half the store if I went in, so I figured my safest bet was to buy online. Uh, and the safest way for me to buy online was to stay with what I know, which was AGV. That's why I chose this particular one. Uh, it does fine in the, the rain, does, doesn't, hasn't let me down. I have heard people uh, state that uh, they've had water beating and pooling. Um, I haven't experienced that. I've ridden in torrential rain uh, where even your greatest wet weather gear is still going to let you down because torrential rain, is what is going to get in regardless, it's unavoidable. Uh, so when it's been light heart, when it's, you know, um, this has not shown me any weaknesses. Um, you've got your vent at the front uh, to bring onto your mouth, which I find if I, even having the crack, either or, uh, or both, depending on the mornings and the days. In Canberra, we get uh, fog and frost, so often when I'm commuting in, um, you have to have an airflow or everything just turns to invisible. Uh, and you can't see anything, and then you become a hazard. So, yeah, so far it hasn't let me down. I don't know if I think the pin locks are as good as they make out that they are. Um, when you've got your sun visor down in the morning because the sun's in your eyes, and you've got this somewhat down, it's all fogging up. It doesn't matter what you do. I've tried any fogs, I've tried creams, I've tried all the different tricks, nothing works. So, um, yeah, I don't think necessarily the pin lock does end much, but I leave it on there anyway as another layer of protection uh, to prevent scratching. So that's helmets. So to boots now. Uh, for longer rides, I have these uh, RSTs. Uh, I don't wear these for around town because they're big, clunky, uh, and as much as they're comfortable, uh, don't have a lot on the ankle uh, so walking around town or in the shops for instance it's not going to be a comfortable uh, outing however generally when I'm wearing that kit uh, my leather kit I will throw on these uh, and it's generally when I'm on the highway or track day or similar daily I generally will wear these uh, Alpine stars these are very, very, very great for everyday use. Uh, so they've got your supports. Uh, however, they are also uh, comfy. I went all black because I work in an office. So generally when I've got my gear on, you don't even really notice that I'm actually wearing uh, like a casual pair of shoes as such, because um, it's all black. So yeah, Alpine Stars, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, most of my gear I purchased from AMA Warehouse. Uh, they've done pretty good by me, so uh, I continue to buy through them. They have good returns policy. Uh, so I'll put a link in the description for 
any of the gear if it's still available um, so you can go and check it out thanks for watching if you've liked uh, the video hit like and subscribe plenty more content coming so talk to you soon Thank you.